All right, this is gonna be so much darn fun. One of our top videos historically here is always, how do I build a Christmas light controller? And so today, we're gonna to do it again. We're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons between different methods. I'm gonna show you my lazy but fast and effective method, and we're gonna dive in and have a lot of fun. Let's do it. If you've never put together a Christmas light controller before, it involves taking a control board like this and the other various components that are around here with me and assembling it into a fully complete box. Now, there are a few different ways to do this and some definite pros and cons to each. Um, historically, and if you buy controllers ready to run, ready to go, which we're hoping to offer soon, and honestly is my recommendation because it's well worth it, you end up with something that kind of looks like this. This one's obviously an old homemade one of mine. Um, but you have a controller mounted to a plastic board. Everything gets mounted up and then you mount it in the box. You've got little cords coming out nice. Um, everything is fixed in place. It can't move and it's good to go. These are really nice and you know, can be effective. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, what do we need out of a Christmas light controller? We kind of need like three things, right? We need it to be reliable. We need it to be accessible, meaning that if we need to get inside of it to adjust something, to fix something, we'd like that to be easy. Using the mounted version, that's not always possible. Sometimes there's stuff that hides behind. So we need it to be reliable. We need it to be easy to get into, to fix. And what was the third thing? Doesn't matter. That's where a lot of times I just use socket boxes, which you can buy in many places, including Amazon, which are just these boxes that have a lid, have these port holes coming out of them, and you just put all your cables through the port holes and off to the races you go. Okay, not quite as neat and clean looking, but a whole lot easier, honestly, usually cheaper and just as effective. Okay, um, the only downside that you sometimes could run into is, um, is that, you know, you just, when you first put it out for the season, open it up and make sure that, you know, there aren't anything, nothing's touching that shouldn't be touching, right? Wires, metal, etc. But if you look past that, you should be pretty good. Okay, so how do we build one of these things? Well, today we're gonna build a Genius 16 port uh, regular controller. Okay, pretty run of the mill. Um, we're also gonna talk about, for example, if you're doing a Genius Pro controller, it's a little easier because you have these built-in power connectors, which are super nice. Okay, we have a video reviewing those where I only mess up a few things, but generally get things right, and we can post that below. So what tools are we gonna need? Well, for a Genius, the beautiful thing is you kinda only need one of these, a screwdriver, and you will definitely need some wire strippers and I have lost my regular wire strippers so I've just got this style which generally works well. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna do the socket box style. This is a generic brand socket box that I got in the height of the season when real socket box were out of stock. They don't really cost that much less and the real brand name socket box ones are significantly better in my experience. So I definitely recommend going with the name brand. So what are we gonna do here? Well, we've got a 12 volt mean well power supply here. We've got our controller. We've got some different wires of sorts. We have that come with the Genius controller, these little mounty doodles. That is a technical term, okay. And then, uh, you know, we've got our wires. So let's dive in. So first thing we're gonna do, there's a lot of ways to do it, is we're gonna go ahead and start hooking up wires. So I'm gonna hook up power first to the control board and power to the mains on my meanwhile power supply. Okay, always do this with the power off, of course. In this case, I have some 12 gauge wire from another project. It's too long for what we're doing, but we're gonna leave it. And then I have a power cord. I think it's a 16 gauge. Doesn't really matter because on a 300 watt power supply, you're really not pulling that much power. Remember, it's 300 watts at 12 volts. It's about 120 volts. It's more like um, a tenth of that. It even says on here that it could be 6.8 amps total, but it's usually gonna be less. Um, granted, you should always size things for the total. Okay, so into the spotlight we go. We're gonna go ahead and nice and simple, couple things to do. One is we have prepared the wires. They are already stripped, namely because 
this controller box was put together until about five minutes ago. I've got this power supply from Wired Watts many years ago. So you have ground, you have neutral, and you have live, which generally are gonna correspond in an American color-coded wire to green being ground, white being neutral, and black being live. So we can insert the wires in here one at a time. May have to loosen if need be. And tighten. Drop your screwdriver, that sounds good. Um, electric screwdrivers can work fine for this. I wouldn't be careful using a drill though because you can over torque stuff and break plastic and break screws, which nobody wants to do. Which you can see there, tighten to the neutral. Tighten to the hot. Because I've worked with electricity a lot, I always <clears throat> hook things up. Ground, then neutral, then hot, because it is the safest way to do it if the power was actually on. I know it's not, but that doesn't change my mind. <clears throat> uh -huh. And then on the controller side, we have V minus and V plus, and we are gonna hook those up accordingly. Now I have here a cord that is um, European coded or like just a lot of things from China are color coded this way. In this case, brown is usually hot, okay? Blue is neutral and yellow with the green stripe or just yellow. No, there's a green stripe in this case is ground. So I am correspondingly coding that to the positive being brown and the negative being green. Granted, there's no rules there, but you want to be consistent so that if you have to troubleshoot something in the future, you don't miswire things. Get those all inserted, tighten them down, same approach, and we're off to the races. Next, we have got our beautiful, not genius branded at all, don't be so standoffish standoffs. Okay, and so opening those up, these are just a generic electronic standoff. I know they're not fancy, but the cool thing about it is they give you a self-adhesive pad on the back. Okay, so self-adhesive pad on the back and on the front, they actually fit the holes in the controllers. I know it's pretty darn brilliant. So I can literally take this controller as it stands and I'm going to apply these like so. so just go, yeah, there's the camera. Literally just go through, pop, 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 pop. Now this is the place in time where we go, hey, we should check and make sure this fits, right? You know, just like buying a boat or something for your garage. So pop it in the box, make sure it fits. It does. It's gonna be just fine, just dandy. I love these little standoffs because they give you space, gives the power supply space to breathe. That fan can work, you're good to go. Uh, while you're here, you always wanna make sure on Meanwhile Power Supplies that this is switched to 115 volt. If not, find your nearest and most friendly flathead screwdriver and change it, otherwise it ain't gonna work. So now that we've gotten all standoffish, we can go ahead, we've got these mounted, Go ahead, take the self-adhesives off. And see, I need to do this for my show this year anyway, so might as well do it on camera for you guys. Beautiful, orient it whatever way you want. You know, I would try to line the standoffs so that they're not blocking the fan. That would be, you know, a recommended setup. Gently push down just a little but the adhesives are really good and we're not really like, we're not doing it like this, you know? And now you're good there. Next, we will take our power coming from our controller. Once again, I said to our controller, this is way too long of a cable. In the case of, if I was doing this not as a cooking show, but for real, um, I would probably chop this. Really, it should be 12, 10 gauge most of the time for controllers and run it to both sides of the board. So one through eight and nine through 16. In this case, just for the sake of brevity, we are going to just do the this side, which says power, and that side has the, it says required, um, because it's what powers the electronics in the board. So now, just go ahead, negative Nancy there where it says ground. 
I prefer to call it negative because it's not really a ground. Um, and then the five to 24 volts, so popping in power right there. Beautiful. And then being a genius controller, I just grab some pigtails, you know, 16 if I were building this out fully, strip down those wires if they are not stripped. If they are from the factory where they just have that little dab of solder on them and they're cut super short, that's not going to be good enough typically, okay? You need a little more wire exposed than that. These clever locks are quite generous in how far you can strip before wire gets exposed above them, which makes it really easy. So then we just unlock them, like I'm going to just do 9 and 10 here. Line up our colors. So black being black, the middle data is data, so that's yellow and then red. A lot of times you can line all three up at once and then just a one, two, three, tighten them down. Really easy, really good. Let's do it again for the kids. And this is a way shorter video than last time I did one of these because man, these genius controllers just make it so easy to do. That's why we love them. And we don't even sell them yet at the time of this video. We're working on it, we're working on it. Capital is expensive, man, it's tough. So we're gonna take the whole guy, bop it in here. Cord's gonna go to the appropriate places. So this cord, which I know is a bunch of extra mess, I'm just gonna shove in there. Power cord out the back here. So we've just inserted it right into that cable gland. And then pigtails wherever we want. So I'm just gonna go left to right in this case. Let me go find our lid. Pop our lid on top. Kablooey. Make sure it lines up for the cable outputs. Tighten her down. Ready to go. We'll see if it catches on fire or if it works. Three, two, one, kablooey. And if we open it up, of course, always being careful opening up something that has hot power to it. But if we open it up, we see we've got power. We're good to go. Controller is happy, wealthy, and wise. I don't know. And we can just for fun, just for fun, just for fun, because Genius Controllers, again, are awesome. We'll find some pixels here. I know these background pixels are. Plug is somewhere. Da -da -da -da. Go ahead and take those. Pop them in, hold down the test button for one second, and viola. There it goes, guys. It's that stinking simple. In under 13 minutes of recording, probably a shorter video in actuality, we have put together, built, our first Christmas light controller. This was a lot easier than things in years past, and still, like if we look inside of it, it's still really secure. You know, with especially with the self-adhesive uh, standoffs that are so standoffish, um, you know, we're able to just really simply put the stuff in there. You could technically use like a double-sided self-adhesive on the power supply to the bottom of the box, but I don't mind it jiggling around. I think it's going to be fine. And you're off to the races. That simple, that easy. Yes, it will take longer than 13 minutes if you're doing 16 pigtails and power to both sides, but at the end of the day, it's gotten a lot easier than it used to be. Um, thanks so much for watching. If this is your first year doing a show, then you definitely need the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. It's the only step-by-step -step guide to this hobby that gets updated every year and has a forum where you can ask myself and other professionals when you have questions applying things to your display. And that's a great option, so check that out below. And when you need pixels, uh, hopefully controllers too, ready to run controllers so you don't have to do this, then Above AVL is your place to get them. Head over to AboveAVL.com. We'd love to help you get everything you need into your hands for your display this year at a reasonable price with really great quality and awesome service if you need it, but hopefully you don't. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.